So, about intensity and uh, magnitude, the very first attempt in this regard was by Robert Mallet in 1857. Uh, the this earthquake after this earthquake in southern Italy, he was actually collecting the data of damage caused by that earthquake, right? So, what he did is that, for example, if we have uh, this study area and this is the epicentral location and currently we do not know have any idea that this is the epicenter. We are talking about 1857. So, he selected different points in his study area right? and uh, he went there and had physical observations of damage. So, on a scale of 1 to maybe 4, he give a number to each location. 4 is the highest damage, 1 is the lowest damage. So, he said that okay, this is 1, this is 2, this is 1, 3, 4, 4 for example like this. Then he joined after this exercise, he joined all those points which have the same number. right? These lines are called isoseismal lines. Iso means same, seismal lines means having same effect of that earthquake. So, all 2 will be joined, all 3 will be joined. He observed that uh, they, they are actually converging to a center point. So, there was a center of damage, most of the points there were 4, then as we go away from that damage, we get a line of 3, then 2 and then 1. So, he called that point as the center of earthquake. right? So, that is how he located the center of earthquake or epicenter. right? So, ep isoseismal lines or isoseismal maps, these kind of maps give us an idea about the intensity, felt intensity of a particular earthquake. right? So, they are the example of very first intensity maps. Intensity map tell us that how much was the the ground shaking level or damage or whatever is the effect of that in one past earthquake right? in a map form. So, he gave the concept of isoseismal lines or isoseismal maps. So, generally we as we go away from uh, the seismic source, uh, the ground shaking level reduce. This is an example of uh, isoseismal lines, but from instead of having 1 to 4, now we have 1 to maybe 8 or 11 maybe. Yes. So, you can see here that uh, each point is given a number here right? and then uh, from 8 to 11, this is the point and then th actually this is from 5 to 7, 6 to 7, this is inside center is 8 to 11, then maybe this line which is corresponding to 5 then some other lines. So, whenever you plot the isoseismal lines based on the observed level of damage, you will see that uh, uh, they will converge to a certain point or epicenter actually. So, later on uh, we developed standardized scales for quantifying the effect of earthquake and they are called intensity scales and the most important in intensity scale is MMI any uh, modified in Mercalli intensity scale, uh, modified Mercalli intensities are shown here and they, that scale I will explain in maybe next slide, but what is an intensity scale? It is the description of the effect of an earthquake and with each description a number is given. So, if a particular uh, after a particular earthquake, if you have a damage corresponding to a particular description, you assign that number to that location. right? So, uh, the very first was uh, Rossi Forel scale, RF intensity scale, it was from 1 to 10. So, 1 means the lowest damage, 10 means the highest damage and uh, there were physical descriptions of what 1 means, what 2 means, 1, 3 means. So, everyone after reading those, those descriptions can uh, give a particular number to a, a particular site. The more, the more refined was uh, uh, G Mercalli, it was having 12 values from 1 to 12, but then later on it was modified and now it is still used, it is called modified Mercalli intensity MMI scale. 
So, intensity scale gave us a qualitative idea about the earthquake damage or how much damaging it was, right. There were uh, uh, so there are some more refined also for example, JMA, uh, Japan Metropolitan Authority and then MSK scale also. So, here you can see uh, Rosiforal intensity scale for one particular earthquake. So, Rosiforal is from 1 to 10. So, each point in in the study area is given a number and then joined and then you get the isoseismal lines according to Rosiforal scale 1 to 10. 10 is the highest. So, if here is the is number 9 which means probably it is very close to epicenter and then as you go away the number is getting reduced. So, if, uh, if we approximately compare uh, different intensity scales MMI, Rosiforal, JMA, MSK. Uh, MMI is from 1 to 12, Rosiforal is 1 to 10, JMA is only 1 to 8, right? 1 to 7 actually and then MSK is from 1 to 12. right? So, you can roughly get an idea that on MMI scale if I am talking about magnet, uh, intensity number 8 it will be somewhere 8 and 9 on Rosiforal and it will be somewhere uh, between 5 and 6 in on JMA scale. right? So, they give us a qualitative idea. Obviously, it all depends on the judgment of that person which is giving that number to a particular site. right? So, but at least a qualitative idea can be obtained. So, we can make a feel about what uh, the intensity 8 means uh, on MMI scale obviously, it will be more destructive compared to the intensity 5 for example. right? So, this is uh, the intensity is shown by different colors actually on JMA scale. So, from 1 to 7 the color actually shows the number actually. Chinese intensity scale even has uh, the pictures also of damage. What actually 1 to 2 means what is 3, what is 4 to 5, 6, similarly 7, 8, 9, 10 will be complete destruction. right? This is MMI scale from 1 to 12. So, they give detailed descriptions of what a particular number mean on that scale. 1 means not even felt, 8 means it have frightened all and this whole description is there. right? 9 means fright, fright journal and then uh, maybe 12 is damage total. right? So, from 1 to 12 you have detailed descriptions, but they are still qualitative. They, they are based on a person's own judgment about the level of damage. So, all of these uh, intensity scales are actually relative. They are uh, relative. So, there was a need to make a unified parameter on which each earthquake can be compared with another earthquake. right? Because for example, for intensity which is depend on the distance from source to site, if you are exactly located on uh, let us say epicenter, you may experience it as, uh, as uh, intensity number 9 or 10, right? even if it is a very small earthquake or moderate earthquake but if you are exactly located on epicenter. Similarly, a very large magnitude earthquake if you are far from that it will may it will have an intensity number which is lower may be 3 or 4. right? So, there was a need to make a unified or universal parameter. right? So, that each earthquake can be given a number and that will represent the size of that earthquake. right? So, therefore, the concept of this magnitude came that instead of basing the earthquake size on the destruction or its effect of ground shaking, why not we make another parameter which is universally applicable. right? And that parameter was the very first person which developed that uh, definition of the size of earthquake uh, was it, it was actually done by almost in the same time by two different researchers Kiyo Vadati in, in, in Japan and then Charles Richter also. Uh, so, uh, both of these researchers almost in the same time proposed this idea 
that we should get uh, we should have a magnitude of an earthquake which is universal so one earthquake should be given a number and everywhere on the earth should have sh should have the same number for the same earthquake right so they developed the magnitude definition and it was this one that uh, if you have an earthquake let's say here this is the epicenter and you are locating at a distance which is 100 km from that epicenter you record that earthquake at that particular station right let's say that recording is this one ug dot dot versus time and that recording two should only be using one particular type of seismograph right so they standardize or fixed one type of seismograph so and they based their definition of magnitude based on that and definition was this that this is the epicenter and you are located at a distance 100 km from that epicenter and you record that earthquake at that distance using that standard seismograph then take that uh, peak ground acceleration in basically peak displacement actually it's not ug dot dot so it should be peak displacement right so convert that peak displacement into micrometers right it can be recorded in any units so you convert that into micrometer now take the the log base 10 of that number it will give you the magnitude of that earthquake right so magnitude is actually log of u value let's say u max u max in micrometer recorded at 100 km recorded at 100 km using one particular standard type of seismograph which is fixed uh, which is uh, wood anderson short period seismograph right so using one uh, using a standard seismograph right this is the definition of magnitude which they fixed so let's try to understand this definition a bit further for example uh, let's figure out what will be the peak displacement recorded in a magnitude 5 earthquake magnitude 5 if you put m5 you will simply get that u should be 10 raised to power 5 micrometer u max right 10 raised to power 5 micrometer if we can convert it into uh, maybe meters it will be what 0.1 meter yes maybe 0.1 meter uh, which means uh, how many centimeters 10 centimeter so a magnitude 5 is an earthquake which if occur 100 km from my location will give me a peak displacement of 5 centimeter right so you can also work out for magnitude 4 uh, you can also work out for uh, maybe magnitude 6 let's work out for magnitude 6 how much is the maximum displacement which you may experience 1 meter so how much is for magnitude 4 1 cm which means with each increment unit increment in magnitude we are having an increment in peak displacement which is 10 times right 1 cm magnitude 4 10 cm magnitude 5 100 cm magnitude 6 like that so which means that the definition of magnitude is set such that it is logarithmic right it is log of the displacement peak displacement so which means that it is not that magnitude 6 is just one unit higher than magnitude 5 it is 10 times higher than magnitude 5 right magnitude 7 is 10 times higher in magnitude than magnitude 6 so it is 10 times increment in the peak displacement and the other effects also right so every time the magnitude goes up by one unit the amplitude of the earthquake waves increase 10 times so this should be kept in mind while understanding uh, 
So, th there is not a small difference between magnitude 7 and 7.2. 7.2 is far more higher than 7, right. So, obviously, you will not always get a recording at exactly 100 kilometers. So, Richter gave in his publications, he gave the conversion charts. So, if you have a recording not exactly at 100 kilometer, uh, you will uh, use those charts to convert your reading into equivalent 100 kilometer and then get the magnitude. For example, this kind of a nomograph is showing that uh, the distance from source to site is on the left side of this line and on the right hand side you have the s minus p separation and you now know that they are convertible. So, therefore, you can just draw them on the same graph, right. This is magnitude, this is the amplitude in millimeters, right. So, let us see that if we have exactly distance 100 kilometer recording station and uh, if we record 10 millimeters or 1 centimeter displacement, peak displacement, we can plot, uh, we can join these two numbers and we will see that we are passing from magnitude 4, right. So, we can use these kind of charts to convert. For example, we have a recording not at 100 kilometer, maybe we have a recording at 40 kilometer. So, we can join this point with whatever is the peak displacement recorded at that location, maybe this one, we can join them and we get the magnitude, right. So, this magnitude uh, definition was called uh, Richter magnitude or local magnitude. Originally, it was proposed only for that area, uh, but later uh, with the cooperation of Professor B. Gutenberg, uh, it was adopted all over the world, right. So, now it is the universal magnitude, uh, this local magnitude M L is the most commonly used uh, magnitude for each earthquake. Now, it is not dependent on the uh, on the source to side distance, right. So, standard 100 kilometer is the definition and you can convert if you do not have a recording for 100 kilometer, right. So, each earthquake on that uh, magnitude scale will give will have one fixed number and it will be universal, it will not be dependent dependent on the location, right. But later on there were different uh, issues which were identified with this magnitude scale. For example, if I ask you to work out the peak displacement uh, for a magnitude 9 earthquake, it will be maybe 10 meters or 100 meters which is not physically possible. So, which means that there is a saturation level for this magnitude scale beyond which this earthquake will not be this scale or magnitude will not be able to capture the size of earthquake, right. So, we should base our definition on some other parameter not on the peak displacement because sometimes uh, the destruction of an earthquake or the actual size of the earthquake is not directly proportional to the maximum displacement which is recorded at that 100 kilometer, right. So, there were more refined uh, magnitude scales which were proposed after this Richter magnitude scale. Some say for example, that we should not take the peak of the whole time history recorded, we should only take the peak of the relay waves from that history, right. Some say may be body waves. So, we have a uh, M S also, uh, which is based on this definition relay waves. We have an M B body wave magnitude, which is based on this idea that uh, the first few cycles of the P wave motion uh, that peak number should be used, but all of them follow basically the same um, uh, the same concept that the peak displacement then convert it into micrometers take the log of log base 10, right. But uh, all of these refined magnitude scales also saturate. By saturating I mean that there is a maximum magnitude up till which they can accurately tell us about the size of earthquake beyond which they will give us the same number, right. Because for example, all of them are based on the maximum displacement. Beyond magnitude 7 for example, the maximum displacement does not increase much, but the size of earthquake still keep on increasing. So, if we base our definition on maximum displacement, our magnitude scale will saturate. 
beyond 7 it will give us the same number right so different magnitude scales re, uh, uh, saturate at different magnitude levels for example mb body wave magnitude saturate at 6.5 the richter scale ml saturate at this much level maybe 7 this one then mjma is uh, the japanese uh, magnitude scale it also saturate so there is a moment magnitude scale a new latest uh, magnitude scale which is basing the size of earthquake on the amount of energy released not um, on the amount of maximum displacement experienced right that is the most uh, you can say accurate magnitude scale that you can somehow assess or calculate the actual amount of energy which is released by that slip you estimate that and uh, make a scale which is using that energy as an input base your definition of magnitude on that energy and then not on the maximum displacement right so if we plot the actual size of earthquake with the moment magnitude scale the moment magnitude scale will not saturate but all others will just go flat after a certain level of an earthquake right so let's now see the definition of the most updated magnitude scale which is mw moment magnitude scale it is this one this is the definition actual thing is this m not which is the seismic moment and it is actually the uh, this thing mu times a into d where mu is the shear modulus of the rock which is ruptured a is the area actually which is in that slip and d is the slip value itself how much that movement have occurred right few meters maybe so m not is the seismic moment is the parameter of the actual amount of energy which is released during that rupture and all other these parameters 10.7 2 by 3 they are just added to make it uh, compatible with mw and uh, ml and all other magnitude scales right so that for lower magnitude earthquakes mw also give almost same number as ml right but for high uh, uh, earthquakes high magnitude earthquakes mw will give a more correct number right so these parameters are empirical they are just uh, included in the definition to make it compatible with other magnitude scales actual thing is this m not so after every earthquake in order to calculate mw we must have an method to calculate m not and then put it in this definition it gives us a more accurate magnitude of that earthquake right so i'll skip the other details this is an idea this gives an uh, this slip value is actually the d value how much slip have occurred actually it itself is not constant so maybe we can use an average value this whole area which participated in that slip is the capital a value and mu is the shear modulus of that rock so actually we have to map the rupture after every earthquake in order to calculate this mw ml is very easy to calculate but mw may require one or two days after the earthquake to map that and finally give mw so therefore in media and everywhere the very first number which comes is ml but then later they replace it with mw which is more accurate right so maybe ml is magnitude 7.8 but mw may be 7.6 or 7.5 maybe right so mw calculation requires some time so let me skip that because the amount of energy can by the way be uh, we related to some other um, you can say things to get, get a feel also for example uh, the equivalent moment magnitude of 7 actually will release an energy almost equal to 1 megaton of nuclear exp explosion right so just to give you an idea these kind of uh, figures are available in different literature and again the definition is logarithmic for mw also it is log base 10 so which means uh, magnitude 7 have 10 times more energy than magnitude 6 right so again that factor of 10 will be there actually it will be changed because of these coefficients right so it's not exactly 10 it is more than 10 so please check that out
a ground motion parameter is actually a number which tells us an information about the characteristic of that ground shaking right for example peak ground acceleration is one ground motion parameter right but it is not the only ground motion parameter it is most commonly used but uh, different earthquakes which are uh, which are recorded in past different durations have different types of ground shakings or uh, you can say recordings available some are like pulse like like this one have one big pulse and then all others are lower than that some are long duration for example this one have many cycles of peaks some are uh, low amplitude some are high amplitude some are very short duration but very high frequency and this one for example mexico city is a very long duration and very low frequency right so which means that we should have a we should be very careful about the selection of ground motion parameter one pga number may not be representative of the whole time history right because for example pga of this earthquake and maybe this earthquake may be very close right but uh, the response of our structure for both of these earthquakes will be completely different one earthquake is just one or two peaks and then all gone other is giving us many cycles to our structure right of loading unloading reloading so the response will be completely different so one pga is not enough so which means that we must have a list of all ground motion parameters numbers which tell us the information about ground shaking 